The blowout fracture is a fracture through the orbital floor. It occurs with a direct blow to the eye typically being punched. It presents as bruising around the eye, enophthalmus and diplopia or double vision and a loss of eye movements. Let's study that anatomy on a diagram. If I add in some of the details of the orbit here, the front we will have the globe, then we'll have the bony walls of the orbit, so the superior, inferior, which forms the roof of the maxillary sinus or the maxillary antrum if you like. And then within the orbit we have a number of important structures. So in the middle we'll have the optic nerve. Around this in a muscular cone we have the rectus muscles. Superior there and I'm just going to put in the inferior rectus that I've already mentioned. When a blowout fracture occurs, typically blood collects in the floor of the maxillary antrum, giving rise to an air fluid level. But what can also happen is that you can get displacement of the inferior rectus muscle through this little trapped ore of bone, and that can cause muscle entrapment, which leads to loss of eye movements and diplopia. The most common way to assess this injury is still the plain film radiograph, although it's limited in its use. The most reliable sign on the plain film radiograph is an air fluid level of the maxillary sinus. So here I'm going to draw the margins of the maxillary antrum. You notice that you can't really see much of it inferiorly, and that's because there's an air fluid level due to layering of blood in the bottom of the sinus. Now the blood has um, pooled there because there is a fracture here through the floor of the orbit. And I'd like to convince you that there is a bit of a soft tissue shadow here and that that could be the um, inferior rectus muscle herniating. So plain film radiograph is a limited assessment method and more commonly we use a CT scan to assess for all facial injuries. Here is a single slice from a coronally reconstructed CT image with bone windowing through the orbits. And I've stopped it on the relevant slice which shows you this fracture of the orbital floor which has two little flaps of depressed bone which are making their way into the underlying um, maxillary sinus which I'm just drawing around right now. Now what you will notice here is that there is certainly stuff herniating into the top of the sinus but the density of this is actually orbital fat it's not muscle. The inferior rectus muscle sits just in the fracture gap um, here, but has not herniated through it. And all of the other um, orbital muscles and the optic nerve are just fine. Interestingly, in this case, there's not really any blood pooling in the floor of the maxillary antrum. So I think we'd have seen very little there, apart from perhaps the fracture, on a plain film study. And here's another different CT scan that I'm going to uh, work through. Starting with the axial images on soft tissue windows, I'd just like you to notice this subcutaneous gas around the orbit. This is surgical emphysema, and it's a surefire sign that a fracture has entered the maxillary sinus and caused the leak of air if we coronally reconstruct that image and scroll through to the affected orbit, we will once again see that gas in front of the orbit. When we keep scrolling, I'm just going to stop on this slice. So looking at the bony margins of the orbital floor, there's another depressed little fracture. This time, I hope you can see that there is layering of blood in the floor of the maxillary sinus. There is also herniation of the inferior rectus muscle through the fracture gap, putting it at risk of entrapment, which can manifest itself as diplopia when the patient is examined.